Yo, Philadelphia, what's happening? Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live. Coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. I'm Phil Falcone here with Larry Steinhaus, better known as my business partner. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. We teach people about real estate investing and stock option investing. Two of the best ways to make money. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. Yes, we are a live program. So you can call us anytime during the show. Don't worry about what we're talking about. Just call us. We love to talk to people who are listening to our show. By the way, Investor School is open. Did you know we're open? That's right. We're not afraid of the Wuhan Chinese Corona death virus. We're not afraid of that at all. You can come to Investor Schooling. We're located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick and mortar building. We like to say that because we're not some guys that fly into town in our jet and sit in a hotel. We're actually real Philly guys who are here to help you. How'd you like to have local guys accessible to our students a minimum of two nights per week? If you want to learn this business, the business of real estate, the business of stock option investing, you want to learn it from people who live it every day. Yo, Larry, what's up, man? What's happening, Phil Falcone? I am so excited that we are here today. I'm so excited that we're open. You know that we've had an amazing couple of weeks recently. We had so many people come in and join the school and so many people who are learning real estate. We we had some really success stories this week. Did, didn't we have some cool success stories? It was a great week. Uh, this whole COVID thing is long overdue. It's been overblown like crazy. And to open up the school again, see people coming back and people joining the school and activity happening like crazy, uh, things are great. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're great. We, we had some we, – we had, Stephanie made, what, 50000 in stock options in the last 12 weeks? It was pretty funny. We made this giant check for her, which, by the way, it cost us a fortune. <laughs> yeah, right. And we <laughs> we made this check bigger than five people that said $40,000 with Stephanie's name on it. And Stephanie didn't show up the last week when she was supposed to come in for the check. She came in this week, and she says, oh, this number's wrong. I actually am up 50000 Which was pretty amazing. I, yeah. The fact that she's up 50000 is really amazing. It's fantastic. Well, uh, she must be learning and following the rules. Yeah, we've got some other students. You know, we had uh, Anthony made uh, like 135000 last year, I believe it was. That was crazy. And then we had some other people making some money. But either way, it's, you know, it's kind of fun. We, we have a good time teaching this stuff, and that's probably – one of the funnest things that we do is we do things like having the stock options sultan come in and talk about stock options. That's Phil's favorite part. I, every time I mention the stock options sultan, Phil gets all excited. He laughs because it's really funny. It is funny. It is. And I would tell you that uh, you said stock options are, are kind of fun. They're not kind of fun. They are a lot of fun. That's true. I mean, I'll tell you what. You want to you wanna take a dull Monday morning? Make a play and you're up two thousand bucks already. Uh, man, it's just like rocket fuel. It makes you feel tremendous. You just want to do more and more and more. Absolutely, absolutely true. And and, and you know, I tell you, in this market, the market right now is a really good stock options market. Now, a, a couple of months ago, it was a crazy stock options market, but right now, it's a really good stock options market, simply because of the fact that the stocks are actually becoming more predictable now. We can actually predict up days and down days. And that's what we need to do with stock options. We look for the little movements, not the big movements. There are, there are different kinds of ways to trade stocks and stock options. Big movements are really good for stocks, but little movements are really good for stock options. And we could do both. And we could learn from both, and we can make money from both. What exciting things are we talking about today, Phil? Well, we got some great stuff to talk about today. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the eight golden rules of property. Eight golden rules. That's right. There's eight golden rules. Did you know that? I did not know that. No, it's I just didn't too know. shy of the Ten Commandments. That's it. So it's, it's almost as popular as the Ten Commandments, but uh, since there's only eight of them, that's the reason you don't really hear about them that it's, often. It's popular in this room, I think, right? It's very popular in our school. We talk about these all the time, and for any of our students who haven't heard it yet, if they're new students, and we got a bunch of new students this month, so they're going to hear it for the first time, and this is something that we're very passionate about. We're also going to have a conversation about stock options. 
and we're going to go through all of the eight golden rules, all eight of them. You're going to get them all. So stick around. This is not a day that you want to be flipping channels. We also had three questions from last week. And, you know, last week we had like four people in the studio, and uh, we wanted to give the, our two guests as much time as possible. So we didn't answer the questions. We're pretty famous for that. If you email us a question, we won't answer it. If you call <laughs> us, but if you call us, right, we'll, answer, we'll take your call right in the middle of the show. We don't care what we're talking about. If we have to drop off a few of the eight golden rules, we'll do it for you because we love to talk to people. So today's question is, the three questions that were emailed to us last week, what formula do you guys use for wholesale deals? Do you teach other topics besides just stocks and real estate? And what is my home's assessed value? Is it different from uh, the market value? And we're going to hit those questions today. We promise we're going to answer those questions today. We also promise that we might not fulfill that promise. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's great. We might not fulfill that promise. <laughs> All right, but go. if you ever if you're if you don't want to call us if you're shy and you want to just email us a question, you can email us info at investorschooling.com. That's info at investorschooling.com. And of course, we're live right now. If you want to call in with any questions, 855-939-1137. We love it when we take questions from the audience. It's a lot of fun. 855-939-1137. If you're in your car and you're traveling and you're listening to us and you have a uh, cell phone, give us a call, 855-939-1137. If you're watching from home on Facebook Live, hey, look, you know, you can ask us a question in the chat box, of course, but it's always more fun to have you on live. So call us at 855-939-1137, and we will have you on the air live. We'll have a little bit of fun. I'll tell you what I want to do, Larry. Let's just get right into the eight golden rules. All right, let's, let's do that. I'm just so excited. I got I to gotta talk about them. All right. Numero uno, you make money when you buy wait a minute that doesn't make any sense how can you make money when you buy <laughs> okay are you just going to list them or are you going to go through each one no no let's talk about it okay let's do it let's take some some time and talk about you make money when you buy that's right so, i agree so i would say that the most look you can make a lot of profit in real estate that's for sure you can make profits with stock options that's for sure but probably the easiest way that I've made large chunks of money in my career in real estate investing is when you buy well. So let's just imagine that there's a home that's probably worth around $240,000, and I'm able to buy it for $165,000. And I'm able to do that because of the extenuating circumstances in regard to what the seller uh, believes that their home is worth and what I believe their home is worth and various reasons that they are under pressure to do something with this home quickly as their house may be in foreclosure or something like that. And no matter how you slice it, I'm up $75,000 if I buy this home. Okay. And now do I have $75,000 in a bill fold folded up in my pocket? No. But has my net worth gone up seventy five thousand dollars? What do you think, Larry? Now, yeah, now has your net worth gone up seventy five thousand? But your future value is fantastic too, because now you can collect rent on that property. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to go into another one, aren't we? Well, we can do some other. We, we, we can make money. We can make money when we sell it. So that seventy five thousand comes back to you later. Right. I mean, uh, you can you can do so many things with it. You could refi the property and get some of that seventy five grand out if you really want to. But you're going to learn when you listen to the eight golden rules of property that there's some, some strategizing to it. So I want you to hear them all so you understand. So, yeah, it's not like you have a, a billfold in your pocket, but you do have the net worth nonetheless. And that, no matter how you slice it, it becomes part of your net worth. It becomes an asset that you control, okay? How sure, long? It's very easy to become a millionaire when you have a bunch of $75,000 in equities. Sure. Like, Larry, let me ask you something. How long would it take an average person to, say, make $75,000? Well, so the average person probably makes that in a year, but that's that's uh, then it's taxed. Uh, and of then, course. And then on top of that, they're paying bills out of it, so they're never going to be able to put that whole thing away. So how long could it take somebody to actually save $75,000? Wow, if they actually decided to save, <laughs> which is tough, too. I mean, right. you know, I know one of the questions is what, what else do we teach? And that's one of the things we teach uh, is how to save money, how to put money away. But most people put nothing away. 
But even if they put, if they happen to put ten percent away, that's seventy five hundred. I mean, you know, if they're making twenty five thousand, and they put away seventy five hundred, that's ten years to to save up seventy five thousand. You got that right. And that's a beautiful thing about real estate that you can look. You're not going to find a deal with seventy five thousand dollars in equity in it every day. But every, I, other, every other day. Okay, but I can no, guarantee you this: that if you're out looking at properties often. If you're constantly talking to sellers, if you're constantly going on appointments, you're calling sellers, you're going on appointments with sellers, and the opportunity to buy houses is constantly in front of you, these deals are going to come around a lot more than you think they are. Absolutely true, and, and it's it's amazing. Sometimes you look at it like, really? Did this just happen? I know I have, a, I have a house I'm going to look at on Tuesday, and the guy literally called me up. He said, hey, you know, I, I, I got one of your mailers, and I want to sell you my house, blah, 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 whatever. I said, you know, what are you looking for? He goes, look. He goes, I just want 100000 for it. And he actually says to me that the houses on the block are selling for two hundred to 250000 And to be honest with you, I was skeptical. When somebody says, when somebody says uh, they want to sell me a house for 100000 and the houses on the block are going for two hundred to 250000 I immediately don't believe them. But I certainly want to listen to the guy, and I certainly wanted to set up an appointment to see him, and I did. And I will see him on Tuesday. Sure enough, I went, I comped the house. He was dead on. They're worth between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand. and $250,000. He's telling me that he has a really bad tenant in there. He just wants to sell it. He wants to move on with his life and get a check. And that's pretty much what the situation is going to be. And when I see him, we'll talk. And if that is the situation, I will be more than happy to give him $100,000 for his $200,000 house. I'm glad you're going to see him on Tuesday because I got an appointment with him on Monday. No, you don't. <laughs> well, I'm actually glad I'm going to see him on Tuesday, too, because I'll be the last one in the door then. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, look, the point to this first rule, the first of the eight golden rules of property is you're going to make money when you buy. And if you keep looking at property and you keep finding properties to, that you can talk to a seller about, then you are definitely going to find great deals like the one I'm suggesting in this scenario. Okay. So you got to get your butt out there and you got to do marketing so that your phone rings so that you're talking to sellers. That's the key. Talk to as many sellers as you can. Do we teach marketing, Phil? Of course we do. We of go course, into of course, of course. Marketing is a huge part of any entrepreneurial business. No one is going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. That's absolutely true. And we teach it. We have some really cool marketing ideas and some really cool letters that we can give you. And you know how you can find that out? You can go to investorschooling.com, sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday, and you can be there, and you can even ask us questions. You, you can actually see Phil and I there, because Phil and I are teaching class, and we're, asking, we're answering questions to the students, and even if you show up for a complimentary class, we will be more than happy to talk to you and answer, ask some of your questions, like what kind of marketing should you send out to get $75,000 in a deal. Sounds great. So why don't we take a couple of minutes we're going to run some commercials, and when we come back, we're going to get into rule number two of the eight golden rules of property. Be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. 
You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. So if you are listening on Sunday, you are actually probably hearing us live, and we are actually on the radio right now, and we are live. If you're listening to one of our affiliate program, or affiliate stations, you may be listening to a non-live show, but that's okay because you can still call in with your questions, 855-939-1137. You can call in right now if you're if you're listening live, 855-939-1137, or if you are listening to a different time, you can call in with that question. Somebody, I'm calling with that number, 855-939-1137, and someone will actually answer that phone, and sometimes it's even me, and we'll be able to answer your questions and talk to you a little bit about whatever it is you want to talk about. Real estate, stock options, find out more about the school, whatever it is. But right now, call in 855-939-1137, and we would love to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in your life, because it is live right now. Or is it live right now? I guess it depends on whether you're listening live or not, right, Phil? It depends. But uh, it's cool that you can call anytime and get, get Larry to answer the phone. So You'll get me to answer the phone. All right, let's get into the next rule. The eight golden rules of property is what we're covering today. Rule number two. Always buy from a motivated seller. Always buy from a motivated seller? Well, that sounds like an interesting rule. Okay, so Larry, tell me, does this sound like a motivated seller? You ask me if I will sell you my house. All right. Hey, Phil, can you sell me your house? No way. I love this property, and I never want to move. But if you paid me enough... I might consider it. I would say that that's probably not a motivated seller. Okay, now how I do come across those, by the way. Yeah. yeah, sure, it happens. That's why you call the client before you go on the appointment. Absolutely you have to, true. You have to gauge how motivated they are. Now, ask me again if you can buy my house. Hey, Phil, can I buy your house? Look, man, I just want to be done with this house. Really? Oh, my goodness. What's going on? How often have you heard that in your life? I, I actually just, like I said, we just right before the commercial, I just told you the same story about the same guy who said he has a bad tenant. He wants to get out, and he's selling the price of the house for about half what it's worth, which is amazing. Yeah. Just make sure you put a clause in that contract that says uh, the tenant has to be out of the house before settlement. I have a funny feeling that he's not going to do that. That's why he's selling it for that price. And, and I, I, agree. I can deal with it. I can and deal I agree. with it. But, and yeah, it, but and that's it, probably why. And it's still going to be worth it to you. But Absolutely, yeah. I may have to go through the craziness of getting the tenant out, but mm -hmm. I have some ways to do that. First of all, uh, honestly, just so you guys know real quick, I, you know, one way to do it is buy the tenant out. Call, knock on his door say, listen, here's five grand cash. Get the hell out of here. And that may actually work. It might, and it might be worth it for you to do that, too. Absolutely. So uh, do we have another rule? Well, we're not done with this rule. Oh, we're not let's, done with that rule let's, yet. Let's okay. take a couple minutes. These rules these rules are like the Ten Commandments. We have to talk about them a little bit. All right, I'm good. Hey, All anybody right? want to call in and talk about one of the rules, you can call in at 855-939-1137 and talk about one of the rules or ask, or ask Phil a question about the rules. Okay, right now, it's kind of like you're in a church of real estate. That I like it. Okay, so the more motivated that a seller is the better the deal should be for you. So you have to really dig deep when you're talking to a seller and make sure that you understand very well what the problem is that they're having. And in Larry's case, it's pretty obvious. He's got a tenant in there who isn't paying him, and he doesn't know how to evict him, and he, doesn't, he probably um, doesn't enjoy confrontation. Yeah, I, I, I'd say that that's probably true. He probably doesn't enjoy confrontation. Right. right. Yeah. I... I wouldn't say I enjoy uh, uh, 
confrontation? Yes, thank you. You know, I, 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 I want to confront you on how you said confrontation. Sure, go ahead. You know, you, you need to <laughs> you need to have your words spelled out and ready to go, okay? You can't have a pause like that. <laughs> well, what are you going to do, kick me off the show? Yes. I'm actually in control of the show. You actually are. I sit here and do all the, all the, uh, all right, the stuff. Right next to me is an extension cord I can pull out of that receptacle, and the whole show goes dead. It so. does. You're right. So remember. So, so you know, if you don't like confrontation, will you do that? Yeah, well, people have accused me in the past of, of liking con- confrontation. And uh, I don't know if I enjoy it, but I certainly don't fear from it. I mean, I, I've been I've been accused of that before. They said, "Geez, you know, it seems like you really perk up when when some confrontations going on." Listen, the people in their radio are getting bored right now with this conversation. So get back to the topic, will you? <laughs> All right. So, if you were uh, getting somebody's house at a deep, deep discount, how would that make you feel, Larry? I love it when I get houses in the deep, 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 deep. Okay. Well, I can't even say it. That's how good it is. <laughs> is that something that you would go home <laughs> and feel guilty about? No, no, I don't feel guilty about it at all. Right. And you know, uh, what I kind of like to think is, hey, um, I'm buying your house, and I'm still paying more than the next best offer. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken mine. And a lot of times, you know, it's just funny because just to bring, just to make the point of that, sometimes we're like, "Oh, you're the one of those ripoff real estate investors. You steal pe- properties." But no, we don't. Let's stop that. Basically, what happens is somebody has a problem, and I'm the solution to their problem. You know, uh, look, if they can sell it on the MLS for two hundred thousand dollars, let him go do it. He's got a problem that can't be solved. This guy, and he knows that I can solve it, and he walks away with a nice chunk of change. He feels good, and he gives his problem to me. And when he gives his problem to me, that's how I make money. I agree, and uh, as a matter of fact, many times I'll say to a seller, "Why don't you just list it on the MLS?" You know? Yeah, absolutely. If, you, so if you're not happy with the offer I'm making, why don't you list it on the MLS? Right? Yeah, and in fact, in in, in some of my marketing material, it even says that if nothing else, I'll give you some free advice, and that's also yeah. nice to do. You go out, you see somebody, go look. You know, I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy for you. I'm not the guy, the seller for you. I'm sorry, I'm not the buyer for you, but, you know, and then sometimes, look, we'll even use our real estate license and we'll list it on the MLF, MLS for them. The first thing I do when I walk into a seller appointment is I give them advice. I never said it was good advice, just advice. Well, if you gave them advice, it, it has a <laughs> chance of being good. <laughs> hey, you better watch it. Okay, <laughs> let's get to rule number three. All right, go. Fall in love with the deal, not the property. Oh, boy, I totally agree with this one. We get this all the time from our, our, our new students, and we have to talk them off the ledge quite often. You know, we have students who they get stuck on, you know, the house next door from their house has high grass, and they're talking to me about it for the next three months. The house next door has high grass. Uh, what do you think it's worth? I think it's worth 200000 You think, what do you think I should, do you think I should talk to the guy? You think I should offer the guy 200000 What do you think? You think I, if I buy for 200000 I can sell for 250000 What do you think? I'm like, have you spoken to the seller yet? Well, no, not yet, but I want to know what I should do first. What, what should I do? And we have this conversation with the new students all the time. I'm sorry if you're a new student of ours and I just made fun of you, but but you n- will know that what we do is we help you not do that. We help you say, listen, you need to find the guy, talk to him, but you also need to find 20 more people to talk to. There are times where I actually answer my phone and somebody says, hey, is this Larry? I go, yeah. And he says, listen, last week you came to my house and you made me an offer of $100,000 for my house. Do you still want to buy it? I'm like, which house? And they're like, you know, 123 Main Street. I'm like, describe it some more. I saw a lot of houses last week. I can't remember. And it's true. I really just don't remember which house it was. And they have to remind me which it was. And then they say, you offered me 100000 remember? I'm like, it's probable that I offered you 100000 so it sounds good. Uh, yeah, I'll come, I'll come by and, uh, and we'll, talk, we'll talk again. That's when you know you're a real estate investor, when you can't even remember what houses that you're looking at. In fact, there are times I wake up in the morning and we go, oh, no, I got a closing today. I forgot. I, I, I got to get prepared for a closing. Maybe I have to go pick up some money or something. Because this happens often also, that we have so many closings, we forget that we have a closing. Have you ever forgotten you had a closing, Phil? Actually, I think I'm supposed to be the closing right now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. See, everybody, we're going to go so (laughs) Phil can go go to his closing that he's supposed to be at. Yeah, you know, I didn't think of it until you started talking about forgetting things. And I said, shit, I'm supposed to be at a a, a closing right now. (laughs) Right. Oh, boy. Okay, so here's a line that drives me crazy when you you take someone – like uh, somebody goes to look at a property and they go, oh, this place is disgusting. I can't believe people live like this. If you see a house that's disgusting and you can't believe that people live like this, 
you should be smelling opportunity. This is where you're going to make the most money. The more screwed up the house is, the more opportunity it is to make lots of money. I one time bought a property that Larry bid on. I got the property for a hundred grand, and I forget what I initially put it up for sale and blasted it out to my list uh, of people who might want to buy the house. Larry, you came in and bid what one hundred thirty-five on I think, that. I house? think I went to one hundred thirty-seven five hundred was my max bid on it. Yeah, that sounds because right. I was trying to make the money. I was trying to make the money when I bought it. Yeah, that's actually rule number one. I'm, yes. I'm glad you know that rule. That's right. <laughs> and, um, you know, what happened was uh, the house ended up, people were going crazy for it, and it actually sold for $172,000, which I couldn't believe. And uh, and I made 68000 bucks off of it. It was the best. Uh, it's not really a wholesale deal. I call it a clean and sweep because I actually had to buy the property. But what a great deal that was. Another thing that people will do is they, they'll say, oh, I absolutely adore this cute little property. Again, don't fall in love with the property. Fall in love with the deal. Be excited about the deal, not the property. Let's take something that could, could, could not be adorable in any way, shape, or form. How about a funeral parlor? Suppose you, you bought a building that used to be a funeral parlor, and now you're going to rent it to somebody who's going to pay you mega bucks. Who cares about how cute the building is? It's a question of does somebody want to rent it? Is it a functional building? Is it going to be a good place for a long-term tenant? Are you going to make a bunch of cash flow off of it? Those are the things that you have to focus on. So don't fall in love with the property. Fall in love with the deal. You know, I, I know about a deal that, that, uh, that you fell in love with. Which one was that? It was uh, this place in Hatboro. That was a, a gas station and a laundromat. And how do you figure I fell in love with it? You fell in love with the deal, not the property. Because the property, as you know, you know, buying a gas station or buying a laundromat are the two worst things you could ever buy, right? Yeah, well, the, the, the circumstances around that deal was that nobody could get a loan for it. That's right. Because it had an environmental disaster back in 1985 where... Something like uh, 200,000 gallons of gasoline poured all over the soil, <laughs> <laughs> which was cleaned up in 1985. Is that why your face is glowing? <laughs> uh, no, but I have noticed some green stuff growing near my feet. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then um, after, after the gas station went out of business in 1985... The property then fell into the hands of a gentleman who ran a dry cleaning business. So the only thing that wasn't run out of this building that's super toxic would be a meth lab. It was never a meth lab. At least you don't know that. Yeah, I'm not really yeah, sure. You, you just it don't want to know that. It right? could have been. It Especially been. if there was a laundromat there. Hey, you want to keep going with some of these rules? Yes, come on. I'm sorry I interrupt you, but, you know, I just do that. Okay. Rule number four of the eight golden rules of property. Never. Be the first to name a figure. Ooh, that sounds like sales negotiation 101. In my opinion, the person who names the price first always loses. That is certainly true. And anything anybody who knows anything about sales knows you never name a price. In fact, there are times where I will just ask, what do you want? And if they don't tell me, I, I, I actually get to the point where I just won't go on. I'll just say, look, you want to sell your property, tell me what you want. If they say, no, tell me how much you're going to give me. I say, look, I, I don't know. You have to tell me how much you want. And if they continue that conversation, I simply end the conversation with, when you're ready to sell your property, let me know. You always want them to name the price first. Yep. I don't care if you're at a flea market or if you're buying a billion-dollar skyscraper. <laughs> how many billion-dollar skyscrapers have you bought? Uh, none at this moment. All right. But I've got some nice properties, but no skyscrapers. You no skyscrapers. Really nice properties. <laughs> I'm I'm afraid of heights, so I probably don't want to buy a skyscraper. Right, nobody said you had to get to the top the top floor. Okay, I'll think about it. So, um, one of the lines that you know I like to talk to people about their house, get them to name a figure first. Talk to them about the repairs that are necessary. Talk to them, can they possibly do any better than that price that they named? Work off of the number that they mentioned. And work off of it diligently. Continue to come back to it. You can talk about some other things and then come back to the price again. Can you do any better than that? All right? If you, uh, 
It, the funniest part about it is this will happen to you a lot, okay? So someone will say, well, I have no idea what my home's worth, so I can't name a number. You're the expert. Why don't you tell me? So if and when, you, okay, you got two choices. You can walk out of the appointment at that point, or you can just name a number. And if you do name a number at that point, suddenly they're experts. Then they say, oh, well, the guy down the street sold. Oh, I thought you didn't know what your house was worth. Yeah. Right? But now you know everything about it, right? So, look, this rule can be used in all aspects of life. Rule number four is never be the first to name a figure. Okay. You want to hit one more? I do want to hit one more. All right, let's do another one. The eight golden rules of property. Number five, be counter-cyclical. Counter-cyclical? Yeah. Can you spell that, Larry? Um, is it something, does that have something to do with the coronavirus? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Come on. I know what you're talking about. I'm let's just go. having a little bit of fun, you know? All right. Well, let's go. You got to go. You got to know when it's a buyer's market. You got to know when it's a seller's market. And you got to be just the uh, in the opposite place at the right time. So if, you're, if it's a seller's market, you need to learn how to buy when it was a buyer's market. And also when it's a seller's market, you need to know what the property is going to be like later. I believe that's what you're talking about. And Yes, you, you okay. are correct. All right. These, these are easy things, you know. You, you better understand them after all the years you've been in the business. That's true. And actually, that's not much different than stock options, too. You buy low and sell high. Correct, Amundo. Yep. You know, I like to tell people that, hey, it takes a lot of fortitude to go against the grain. I mean, everyone else is, is – if everyone else is selling and you're going to be the one who's going out buying, that's not easy, especially for new people to do. I mean, it's easy for us. We've been in the business a long time, you know, but um, – it's that's what you have to do. You have to do the opposite. You have to be counter cyclical. So you must cultivate the stamina to do just that. I'll tell you, like one of the times in my life that I did this the best was in 2012. I went down to Florida, borrowed a bunch of private money, many, many millions of dollars. I think the total amount of private money I I owed at one point was was close to eight million dollars, maybe just shy of eight million dollars. And I went out and bought all these properties. And then I rode these properties up in the cycle. So 2008, we had a huge crash. I went to Florida in 2012. In hindsight, I wish I went there in 2010. I didn't act quick enough. I kept saying I was going to go to Florida. And then when I finally did, you know, I didn't go till 2012. But that worked out to be a very nice little run there. So we bought a bunch of property in 2012. And then around 2017, 2018, I started unloading some of them. Still have a bunch of property down there, but that is that was really a counter cyclical play. There's also a counterintuitive play. So here's something that a lot of our listeners don't know: they get confused about debt, right? You said you were eight million dollars in debt on just those properties. I know you, I know you were more, but you were eight million dollars in debt. And those properties. Could you? There must have been one or two listeners who just cringe and go, "Oh my god, he owed eight million dollars! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" You guys don't understand that debt is the best way to get rich. The more debt you have now, I'm not talking about buying furniture debt. I'm not talking about buying cars debt. I'm talking about buying good assets that are going to increase in value with debt. My goal is to be $40 million in debt. Now, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> People don't understand how important that is and how great that is. If I'm $40 million in debt, I probably have at least $60 million in property, which is a great place to be. And you need to not be scared of debt. You need to understand debt and how to work debt, not ever, ever be scared of debt. Of course, if you owed $40 million on a huge portfolio of cash-flowing properties, you are an extremely wealthy man. Let me, sh let me share with you a story, Larry. Sure. One of my uh, mentors, per se, you know, I have a lot of mentors. Every time I read somebody's book, if I really like the person, I consider them a mentor. I've never met this man in person, okay? But in 1980 in New Zealand... Interest rates were as high as 27%. I don't live in New Zealand. Don't ask me why they were that high. They just were, okay? Democrats. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I don't know what the <laughs> political <laughs> pop parties are in New Zealand. <laughs> what this guy did was he was a smart investor, and he knew that rates would drop. So he went out and acquired a lot of property. He bought a bunch of property when the, when the interest rates were at 27% because he absolutely knew that it wasn't going to last there. And that the property, the it, that the property interest rates that banks were lending 
was going to drop. And when they did drop, what do you think happened to the real estate market, Larry? The real estate market went on fire. It, it went soared. on fire. Yeah, absolutely. It soared like crazy. So his property values went up like 50% in the first year when the rates dropped. And then he just refired his properties. Okay? So that takes guts. Let's admit it. That's what we're talking about when we say it takes a lot of fortitude to go against the grain. This guy did the opposite of what everyone else did. And, and all of his friends and his family who don't know anywhere near as much real estate as he does, but they were all telling him he was nuts. And what he did was a genius, okay? And, and that's why I love this rule. It's one of my favorite rules. Number five is be counter cyclical. All right, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to the other three rules after the commercial, right? Yeah, why don't we go to commercial now, and then we'll be back in two minutes to give you rule number six. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. You know, I just have to make a comment about our commercial that we play that says we've been in business for 30 years. We I, Actually, I've been doing this for 38 years, and you've been doing it for, what, 33 years? 31 years. 31 years. I'm okay. nowhere near as old as you. That's, yeah, that's not really true, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I was 18, and you started when you were 20? 20, 23. 23. So, yeah, so we've been doing this for a long time, but that means your years isn't right, but that's fine. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and we actually have a really good time with it. And by the way, if you want to, call us up, 855-939-1137, 855-939-1137, and you will speak to us live if you're if you're if we have the live show going. If not, I promise you that someone will answer the phone, and we will be able to talk to you about whatever question you have, 855-939-1137. Of course, if you want to take a free class this Thursday, go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a free class. You will hey, have a lot of fun. Did you mention we're open, Larry? Not only are we open, but we're open. There, is, there was never any red, yellow, green at Investor Schooling. There was always <laughs> red, white, and blue. We were open with uh, bright, screaming lights. We're open. That's right. If you're worried about the coronavirus, we have these amazing bubble boy suits. Are we going to get into the bubble boy suits again? <laughs> I just couldn't help it. I know, exactly. So if I, you guys just, were, I just love those things. If you guys were long-term listeners, you know we had these, all these commercials going about Bubble Boy suits. I don't want to play the commercial right now because we're, we're, we got a little, little bit of time left, and I want to make sure that we get to the rest of the 
Hey, if we the don't get to the rate. rest of the rules, Larry, they're just going to have to come to the school to hear them. A- absolutely true. Go to investorschooling.com and sign up right now. Let's hit Pull over right now. Man. Go to investorschooling.com. I can't remember how I do it. Pull over right now. Go to investorschooling.com. Sign up RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. Boy. All right. Let's hit some like of Crazy Eddie. Remember Crazy Eddie? What formula do you guys use for wholesale deals? So this is not one of the eight. This is a different question, right? This is yeah, the question we're just we answering right. some of our yeah. listeners' questions. Okay. So what formula do you use for wholesale deals? You ready, Phil? I'm ready. My favorite formula is, ready? Make money. <laughs> now, I realize that that's not probably the answer you want to hear, and I'll give you the answer that most people hear and most people teach, and that I we do teach, but mine is always, the answer is always make money and make enough money that it's worth your time. So here's, when you go to sell the property, you need to figure out the formula for when you're going to sell the property, not for when you're going to buy it. Because when do you make money, Phil? When When you buy. When you buy, right. So I need to know how much to buy the property for. So I need to reverse engineer this. So typically, the buyer of the property from me is going to pay 65 to 70% of the ARV minus repair costs. So ARV is the... um, the after repair value. So in other words, let's use easy numbers. Let's say it's worth $100,000 when it's beautiful and completely renovated. So that means that someone is going to buy it from me for 65000 minus whatever it costs to repair. So let's say it costs 30000 to repair. So that means they're going to buy it from me for 35000 Now, if I want to make money, I've got to buy this property for a lot less than 35000 So typically, I'm going to try to get this property for anywhere from twenty. dollars to twenty five thousand and make ten to fifteen thousand dollars. That would be my formula of what I'm going to offer or my maximum allowable offer to the seller. Now you're going to say, well, why would somebody sell it to you for twenty five thousand when they could sell it to somebody else for thirty five thousand? Well, the answer is they can't sell it to somebody else for thirty five thousand. Not everyone com- comes in as a cash buyer. Not everyone understands how to buy it, and not everyone cares. A lot of times people just want to get rid of their property. Like we talked about earlier, we talked about the guy selling me this property for probably what it's worth, probably half of what it's worth because he just wants out. But that's the formula we're going to use. We're going to use 65% of the ARV minus repair costs minus whatever I want to make as a wholesale deal. Sounds great. Let's go to the next question. Do you teach other topics or just stocks and real estate? Well, we teach a whole lot of topics besides stocks and stock options and real estate. We teach people how to change their mindset on money. We've taught people how to use life insurance policies to save money. By the way, we don't don't sell any products. It's always interesting that people come to think, oh, you just want to sell a product. We don't sell any products. We sell education. That's all we sell. And sometimes there are people who have good products that we endorse only because we think they're good products. So there, there, there are people who, like the money multiplier, we had the money multiplier, which was a, a, a way of using life insurance to pay down debt, we, we, and we endorse it because we really like the idea. We like how it works. We also teach people how to save money, how to buy, how to look at an investment, whether it's a, whether it's a house or even a mutual fund, how to look at an investment and say, hey, hey, how do I do it? The other thing is how to change their credit score. We've had some serious, some serious changes in credit score uh, for some of our students. You know, they come to us maybe with a 600 credit score, and we teach them how to get it in the sevens within two or three months. It's actually really easy to do once you learn how to do it. We also teach people how to build credit, how to get loans, how to get more loans than they can ever imagine and need. The best time to get money is when you don't need it. If you want to get money, get it now. And then you don't need it. Look, before the coronavirus stuff that happened you know, a few months back, before the coronavirus stuff, you know, I, I had built up my cre- my available credit to so much What's money. What's the coronavirus? You mean the Chinese Wuhan The Chinese death Wuhan, virus? no, no, the Kung Flu, as Trump calls it, <laughs> if, <laughs> which I thought was hysterical. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so the, the uh, Chinese Wuhan virus comes in, and I had no problems, you know, look. We, we, we did keep the school open, but of course you must understand that we had less attendance and, you know, things things changed a little bit for us. Actually, I think they all changed for the better because we, we did some online stuff, too. I was personally disappointed that Governor Wolf didn't show up. We tried. We actually advertised to get him in and he didn't show up. We asked him to come and he just didn't show up. Yep, we, we goaded him with actual ads on the radio. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right, let's hit the last question. Do I need to play one of them? Mm-hmm. What do we... If you want to, what do you ahead. think? All right, let me go see. If I, let me see if I could find it because I actually wasn't prepared for it. But let's see if I could find it. This was the Governor Wolf ad. This is hysterical. Uh, here it is. You ready? Here we go. 
Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. I am inviting you and, most importantly, Governor Tom Wolf to attend this Thursday night. I'm going to teach you and Governor Tom Wolf real estate investing and stock options trading. We might even pull out the Constitution and read that as well. Looking forward <laughs> to seeing you this Thursday night at InvestorSchooling.com. That's right, RSVP right now on InvestorSchooling.com. That whole <laughs> ad was political. Was it? I had no idea. Did you say anything about real estate or stock options? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? So the funny part is the end of that ad, the end of th that you heard, that's actually part of the ad that we actually ran. And we ran that in uh, on, a, on our New Jersey affiliate station. We ran it there. It was hysterical. And we got some interesting responses from the five ads that we ran, which were really funny, where we actually called it the Chinese Wuhan virus, which was fun, too. Yeah, but we I mean, totally went off topic, didn't we? I don't even remember what we were talking about it's anymore. It's pretty hilarious that we were making ads specifically to upset Governor Wolf to come and arrest us so right. we could get a viral video. <laughs> oh, and by the way, my credit paid for those ads. That's how we were able to run those ads because we knew that when we ran those ads coming out of the other side of the Chinese Wuhan virus, we would definitely be able to have you know a, a better business, and that's exactly what happened. Right. We were able to do that. Let's hit the last question. Sure. Why is my home's assessed value different from the market value? I don't know. I'm kind of thinking of a really good joke for that. I just can't. You can just give the straight up answer. All right. I'll come give the straight up answer because it's different. Okay. Now, so uh, assessed values are are values that the township or the county uses for for your taxes, and the numbers are often weird. And I honestly, it's really tough to try to figure it out. They're supposed to be, believe it or not. They really are supposed to be the same number. It's a millage, right? Right. Well, the millage is, th is what the n is that number is being uh, multiplied by right. to get your taxes. So if it's you know one point one mil, whatever uh, one point one mil, not million mil, right? They would use that number to get your taxes. But the idea of the assessed value is you know that they won't be able to change assessed values because they can't actually. And this is why you need to be able to go to your. If you pay taxes on your house, your real estate taxes on your house, you need to go to your – find out what your taxes are. And then if you feel that they're too high, and they often are, you need to go to the township and actually dispute this. And it's a good possibility you could win. Do you know that only 10% of all people dispute it and only 10% of all people actually – do the paperwork right to get the number changed, and those people, they just most of the time they'll just give it to you because they realize that if that it doesn't matter, you might as well not, they might as well not fight with you. I mean, I never do that, Larry, because I just hate to save money. I know it's. it's I do. It's, I'm not kidding around. Like okay. I really mean that. Like if you focus on saving money, then you're not going to be out making money. I would rather just make money and have high expenses. I'm okay with it. That was a really good. A, a, a really good statement, by the way. Actually, yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I've yeah. done, I've done that too. It's you know, kind of like, would you, would you sit at your kitchen table and cut coupons out of a newspaper for an hour and a half so you could go to a supermarket and save seven dollars? The heck with it. I'd go to yeah. the supermarket, get the food back in in an hour and a half uh, less than it would take me to cut the coupons, and then go out and make some money. Yeah, but I won't go to the supermarket because I have to wear a mask. Yeah, I understand that. You won't go anywhere where you have to wear a mask. That's exactly right. All right, you want to hit another rule? Let's hit another rule. We got 10 minutes. Let's see if we can get a couple more in. All right. All right, the, we're doing the eight golden rules of property. And number six, we're up to number six. Always try to buy with zero to little down. I happen to love that rule. Yeah, I actually wrote... Favorites. I actually wrote a book called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. So, I mean, I'm pretty strong on this category. I like that book. By the way, I read your book. I thought your book was great, by the way. So if anybody out there wants – you know what, Phil? If they mention the book, can we give them a free copy if they show up at Investor Schooling? Sure. But, All right. But they got to show up. They got to show up. Yeah, you, you can't Now, you can't online. come on Zoom. You right, want right. to come see us? Up, yeah. And if you wear a mask, uh, I'm not giving you the book. No, don't do that. That's not, <laughs> that's not right. You can wear them. By the way, yeah, you can you can wear a mask. Now, please expect that there will be several people in the room not wearing masks. So, if you want to choose to not come, that's fine. We also have classes online via Zoom. So, if you go to investorschooling.com and you don't want to come in because you don't want to wear a, a mask, or if you're too far, we have classes in Zoom too. Because you know, we actually have uh, we're actually going pretty far down now with our radio with our radio affiliates. We have we. Our stations are pretty far down now, and some of them may be about two hours away from us. And obviously, if you're two hours away from us, you don't have to. You don't have to be in person. You could just go to investorschooling.com, go on to our Zoom class, and if you again, 
getting back to the point is if you want to wear a mask, you can feel free to wear a mask. If you want to wear a mask on the Zoom call, that's okay with me too. We might make fun of you when we hang up, but you we but it's okay with me. Or when you're on. Or when you're on. Yeah, that will definitely make fun of you when you're on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. So back to <laughs> always try to buy with zero to little down. So for years, your parents may have told you to pay off all your debt. There's a couple of so-called gurus out there, and I understand why they exist, like like Susie Orman, like Dave Ramsey, for example. Mm -hmm. They teach to pay off everything. But certainly, that's not the strategies that you're going to learn at investor schooling. We are leverage guys, and we're looking to buy investment property. If the property makes money, it makes money. If it's a cash-flowing machine, it's something we don't mind having debt on. Yeah, exactly. We we talked about this earlier. Look, you know, I'm looking to be forty million dollars in debt. I'm going to be very excited if I'm forty million dollars in debt because that means that I have a lot, a lot of net worth. Yeah, you you're doing great if you're if you have forty million dollars in debt. Exactly. Right. You know, it's it's funny that that these gurus they teach people how to pay off everything. But what what they should be teaching them is, hey, the less that you put down, the smaller amount of risk that you actually have tied up in this particular investment. Yeah, that's amazing. There's actually a book called The Banker's Code. And if any, anybody wants to read a really good book, it's called The Banker's Code. And in The Banker's Code, they, they actually talk to uh, they talk about how the bank moves the risk to the buyer, to the person borrowing the money, by s making them put more money down. So, for example, if the house is $100,000 and you put down twenty dollars to $25,000, the bank has no risk. They gave all the risk to you because they know that the, it's highly unlikely that that property will be worth less than 75000 But even if it is and they have to sell it for sixty five, you lost twenty five. They only lost ten, and they lent you the money. It's amazing. Thank Bankers you for Code reminding me. Awesome. Thank you for reminding me why I don't borrow from banks. Yeah, exactly. You know, another benefit to putting down zero or almost nothing down is your cash on cash returns go through the roof. Okay, if you care about a cash on cash return, I don't really worry about it. But it's a, f you know, if you've got some cash and you want to buy the property and it makes sense for you, just buy it. But um, that's something that a lot of investors look at. So I figured I'd mention it. And if you put a small amount of money down or zero, guess what you can do with the rest of your money? You can buy more property, more cash flowing property. So your portfolio keeps going up. Your debt levels keep going up. But it's good debt. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Hey, do you know what the exact, the exact definition of good debt and bad debt is? Mm -hmm. you Why ready? did you give it to me? You ready? So uh, bad debt is any debt that you pay for. Good debt is any debt that someone else pays for. I like that. Yeah, it's a great definition, isn't so it? So who pays for the debt on a piece of real estate, Larry? The tenant. The tenant. How about that? So you mean that you can put little to nothing down on a piece of property and get someone else to come in and make all of the payments on your property the entire time you own it? That's exactly right. So I don't even care what my interest rate is. And my interest rate is 28% on a property, and I'm making $100 a month because the tenant's paying the interest, all the expenses, and on top of that, I get $100 after all that. Hey, I, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's an infinite return. It's a fantastic return. Larry, you want to take a couple of minutes before our show is over and talk about some stock option strategies, strategies sure. or some rules? Yeah, so I'm going to make a suggestion because we, we talk about stock options all the time. We're out of time. I usually go through some stock option picks, but we, we kind of we kind of went a little bit long today because we wanted to talk about the eight rules. So let me talk about a little bit about what happened was I created a set of rules. They are called the Rules of the Crazy Options Trader. And these rules are fantastic rules for trading options. They actually were created so that you have a harder time to lose money. In other words, it's difficult for you to lose money with these rules. Can it happen? Of course. But it's difficult for you to lose money. And if you don't lose money, what happens, Phil? You make money. You make money. That's exactly right. And that's why the rules work. So one of the things I'm going to recommend that you do is I want you to find six stocks. That, By the way, that is one of our rules is to actually trade only six stocks or tra trade only six assets, stock option assets. And we tell you this because it makes more sense. Basically, what happens is instead of chasing every great stock out there, and there are some good ones out there right now, as a matter of fact, like you know, I mean, like CCL and RCL and 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 WFC, they're all great ones. But you, if you end up chasing them, you'll actually sell a play before it happens and buy a play that's no good. 
But here's my suggestion. I want you to pick six stocks that you want to watch. The other reason that you're going to do this is just to get yourself used to the stock market, used to looking at charts, used to looking at what happens, used to looking at what happens when there's a news article or when Trump says something smart or when, when Trump tweets something that affects the market. You can actually see it and you can actually start predicting what's going to happen. But if you just watch these six stocks, it's a lot easier to start to understand the market. Now, it's funny. We teach something called the tuna and, and steak theory, tuna and steak theory. Uh, at Investor Schooling. Uh, it's a theory that I teach, and unfortunately I don't have time to go through it right now on the radio, but if you come to Investor Schooling this Thursday, you will learn about the tune-in stake theory. And it's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of students who come to us, they've had some trading experience in the past, and once they understand the tuna and steak theory, everything that they knew before goes away, and it makes total sense to them. They get it. They make money on the tuna and steak theory, and it's a really good theory. I know Phil started following it, and he's doing pretty well too, right, Phil? I'm having a very good stretch. Yeah, actually, it's, it's been great. We've had some really great students doing some, making some really a lot of money, and now is definitely a time to to get in. So follow six stocks, and that would be my suggestion to you. If you're a first timer, I also suggest you come. Come to investorschooling.com, RSVP. We are open, you know. I, I know, and Governor Wolf still didn't show up. Did so I mention we're open? We are open, and there's people here. As a matter of fact, we and we had a full house the other day, which was pretty neat. We also had a, we had a full house. We had 50, 60 people on Zoom too. Yeah. So yeah, so go to investorschooling.com and you can log in and you can RSVP there. Phil, I think I'm going to give the mic over to you now. All right, thank you. So if you wanted to hear the rest of the eight golden rules, I think we stopped at six. There's a couple others you didn't hear. Uh, come to a class on Thursday night, and I'm going to tell you what the other two rules are. They're the important ones, too. I always save the best for last. So come out Thursday night at 7 o'clock in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Go to investorschooling.com. Put your name and email address in to reserve your seat, and I promise you I will tell you in person – I will tell you what the rule number seven and rule number eight of the rules that we were talking about today that you want to hear. So at this point, I wanted to say thanks to our producer, John Cole, for helping us out today. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor on our show, just email us, info at investorschooling.com. That's info at investorschooling.com. And uh, we are going to be playing our show on several different radio stations, so you might hear us around town. Just search for Investor Schooling Live. And don't forget to visit InvestorSchooling.com for your free complimentary class Thursday night at 7 o'clock on real estate investing and stock option investing.